All right. We're ready. Here we go. All right. London Brown. My man. Okay. <laughs> How you doing today? Uh, everything is everything. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Um, most people know by now that this is our round two, trying to get this thing done, okay? Because you know at DAP, we have no secrets, all right? Yes. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to interview because you're doing some some really great, really big things, and I'm just so happy for you and everything and all your accomplishments. And I kind of just want my audience to get to know you and any future audience to get to know you, especially some of my theater kids because – a lot of them have the same kind of background or, you know, they just, to, I like for them to see that even though you're doing more TV and stand up, that you do have a theater background too. Yeah. Um, and what that meant to you. So if you can just give us like a little background on, you know, how you got started and where you're from and all that stuff. All right. Uh, my name is Lyndon Brown or um, as we have to do now because times are changing, I'm at real Lyndon Brown. And uh, <laughs> I know, right? So uh, I'm born and raised out of South Central Los Angeles. And um, I just remember always, I uh, just remember growing up always being really drawn to the arts. Um, at first, I think it was like visual arts and stuff like that. And then growing up, it became more into performing arts. And um, so I think as early as uh, I just remember the first thing I was able to kind of do was draw and I thought it was going to be an animated for, uh, for Disney. And then I got, uh, I was a musician in church. So I started performing and doing, you know, plays and elementary and so forth. Middle school, I got into, um, I got into band a little more seriously and then the drama club there. And then high school was when I really began to take theater, um, a lot more seriously than uh, I did a, a play called, uh, well, let me just say this also in ninth grade, I had very little experience. I had no presence. So I was cut out of everything. <laughs> Literally, I was cut out of all the scenes. And I remember um, just starting out with, um, like, I was like first cameraman. And the first musical I did was Fame. So nice. I, uh, was just the cameraman for whatever the scenes were. I swept a broom in a scene. Nice. Uh, just did a lot of that kind of thing. And then uh, I was still going back and forth between uh, playing in the school band and then uh, also performing with the theater arts. I was taking the, the drama class there as well. And uh, But then by my... Um, 11th grade year, I did a, a musical or play called Rebel Without a Cause, and I played Plato. And then that's when the, that's when it really clicked as far as uh, me pursuing acting in a real way because I was able to get some sort of return back from the audience. And that uh, live feedback made me feel like, yo, this is what I'm supposed to do. And um, so from there, I started becoming the leads in the plays and so forth because I started to develop some presence. And um, my senior year, I did a, a musical called, um, I did what, well, I actually did a few musicals. One was called Hello, Dolly. I played Barnaby Tucker. Oh, okay. That's when I started, I took on the ideas of tap dance because it was a choreographer by the name of Channing Cook Holmes. And uh, he came to teach the cast a few numbers I was like, sure, I'll learn it. And then um, my senior year, I did um, a musical called Guys and Dolls, and I was Sky Masterson. And nice. uh, that was directed uh, by Marky e. Swinton. And that was a lot of work because, you know, uh, <laughs> Sky Masterson, the, char the character Sky Masterson was very sharp, you know, somewhat of a womanizer and yep. very, very cool. And so that took a that that was some took some work for me because I'm just a regular guy and, and it's cool. Um, and um, so anyway, from there I graduated high school. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do, and um, I got a job. I was doing telemarketing 
for the Los Angeles Times newspaper. And it was just my gig. It was just something to do. Right. And while I was there, I started learning a little Spanish so that I could sell the Los Angeles Times newspaper in English and Spanish nice. so I could make more money. Um, but I was still joking around a lot on, at the job. And um, one of the bosses said, yo, you should do our, our talent show, tell your jokes. I was like, sure, I'll do it. Um, people laughed, laughed, they liked it. Then after that, uh, he booked me in my first club. Um, it's called the Squeaky Clean Light Comedy Club or Step Up Restaurant. And um, I did that. And then I just kind of left it alone because I wasn't sure. I mean, I, I wanted to do it, but I just didn't know what the next step was. Right. Um, from there, my theater teacher from high school, he drove me up to college, got me in a small school up north in, uh, in California. I took a theater arts there. Um, still just studying hard. Um, I also got involved in dance because uh, there were a lot of girls on the team. So, <laughs> so, yes. So I, did it. so I did it and then I messed around and started living my life as a, a choreographer. Start teaching hip hop dance and dancing and doing and that whole thing. And um, I got a job to be uh, a theater teacher. And so I was teaching high school, middle school and high school theater and giving out grades and like a full on, full on teacher. So while I was teaching there, um, I also was offered, um, I was teaching at an after school program. And then after teaching all day at, at, like at a regular school, there was the after school. Then after the after school, there was, I was teaching at the Boys and Girls Club in Watts. Uh, teaching dance there. So um, ideally every job I've had has always been related to the arts or performing. Even when I was selling the Los Angeles Times newspaper, uh, I was still, I would pretend to be different people on the phone <laughs> because I don't know. I just. Well, I mean, it's telemarketing. You gotta, you know, make it fun or something for yourself. Right. And so the, you know, they would, you know, I was, I was on the, um, I was on the phone, I think I was like, I don't know, 18. And then, you know, people would call. And I, I remember one one of the ones I did, um, I did Den Denzel Washington, they would, they would call and say, um, boom, hello. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking to buy a sale. I'm looking to sell you a uh, newspaper. And if you if you, uh, if you would like to buy a newspaper, we got coupons, we got uh, the sports, sports <laughs> section, boom. And then everybody was like, it's like, you know. And the girl's like, ooh, I, you know, I might buy one because you, you sound, I don't know that's you, but you sound just like, you know, that was selling the paper. Oh, um, my gosh. That got me through that. And then um, after doing all these side jobs, like I said, I, I got into dance teaching. And then still doing theater, trying to be an artist. Right. And, um. And then I stumbled while I was teaching. They had a, um, a fundraiser, a comedy show fundraiser for the kids. And I think I asked, like, how? I, asked, I inquired about it. And I think the assistant principal, like, she just signed me up. And, and I didn't run from it because I knew I wanted to do it. And this might be the, the nudge that I, I needed to get going. And um, so I did this comedy show. And from there, I started working the open mics. And then that's where the comedy thing picked up for me. And um, it started to move forward. So th th this is uh, some, some years after high school. And now from here, I'm going to try to just encapsulate this whole thing and sum it up. Um, I started working open mics. Under two years of doing stand-up, I was in a club. And um, the host by the name of D. Ray Davis, uh, they may recognize him from and Out, but he was on, he was, I was at the Improv, Hollywood Improv. Chris Tucker was on stage working out. Working out meaning trying out new material because he's about to go on tour. Okay. Uh, so the host says, he says, yo, have you seen London? And then uh, Chris was like, no, nah, I ain't seen him. So D. Ray said, yo, um, you should watch him. And he pushes me on stage. 
I do whatever my strongest five minutes was at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I get off stage. Chris, Chris Tucker and I, we exchange numbers. He called me uh, a couple weeks uh, after. And um, I did like um, a tour with him from that from that phone call. I toured with him uh, about like three years. And, and you know what? Everything. I remember that because I was what? listening to the Tom Jordan Morning Show. And I think I, I might have texted you around the time and said, oh, my gosh, I heard you on the tour with Chris Tucker. You know, because yeah. he, he was up there talking about you and about how funny you were and opening up for him. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's wild how it all kind of worked out that way. Um, so yeah, we, we toured everywhere from the UK to Canada. Uh, we, we traveled in the states, and uh, from there, I did a showcase called the CVS Diversity Showcase. And uh, basically, what it is is like an SNL in Living Color Mad TV on stage, and uh-huh. uh, for CVS Network and audition. And he put this group of us on stage doing these sketches and all the top managers and agents come out basically to scout us. And um, after that, I remember the showcase, did, it went really well. And I met with every top agent person and casting um, and manager. So I, I signed with my first um, agency and then they sent me, this was like 2011, they sent me out um, to some auditions, and then I booked my first job with them. Um, I booked the hustle for Fuse um, a few months later, or what have you. And um, we did six episodes, um, one season on Fuse, and that was the creator of that. His name was Prentice Penny. And um, after that. I was still, I was torn with Chris. I was still trying to figure it out because the first season had ended. Uh, even though right. it was one of the highest rated shows on Fuse, but they were going through managerial changes. So I was like, okay, what's next? So I'm still working stand up. And then I got a call um, by one of the writers and creators of Hollywood Husbands uh, with Kevin Hart. And um, he called, said, Yo, have, you all, have you all this for ball? I said, no. He said, they're looking for you. He gave them my information. They called me audition for Ballers 2014. And then um, we did season one. Season one, uh, it was rated um, the number one comedy on HBO. And um, so right now I am in Miami, just finished wrapping season two. So that's kind of my story. Nice. So what was it like getting that? that call that that you booked ballers yeah. and it's starring you know you know what Dwayne. it would have been um i got the call well the process I, I got a call in august i went into audition in august and after my first audition the second my callback was right to the producers so i knew that was a good sign okay um, they liked the fact that i could adjust in the room rather quickly um uh, because on set Directors don't have time to be given acting lessons, you know, they right. can tell you and do it. So I think that's what did it. And then there was, after callback, callback, there was like two weeks where it got quiet. Um, then I was trying to figure out what was up. And so in that process, I mean, you know, I remember when I going to the audition, a friend and I, we prayed about it. And then after that, there was no doubt, you know. Um, or humanly, we have some doubt, but not enough to lose faith. Right. And so, um, I just stuck with it. So, really, I wasn't surprised that they called and offered me the part. I was more so just waiting for them to do it. Okay. And I say that with all humility, not like I knew I had it, but more so. Uh, you know, and not to sound, you know, self self aggrandizing by any means, but more so my energy was just into my faith and believing in what it was I had prayed for and the work that I knew I was prepared to do. Yeah. And so um so when they called, I was like, Yeah, man, I've been been waiting, like what's happening? <laughs> um, what was cool is that they they asked me, they said, um, do I have any obligations in LA? I was like, No, I'm not married, I don't have any kids. And so 
they were like, well, uh, do you have a problem moving to Miami? I was like, no, no problem. And then they said, well, we're, um, we're going to make you a regular set of reoccurring. And for those watching this, reoccurring is just basically, if you ever seen an episode of Martin, uh, Brum Man was reoccurring, so not every episode. And um, so going from reoccurring to regular, or one of the leads of the show, was um, that was cool. Yeah. Uh, that I can appreciate. So that's great. Yeah, and it was cool. I mean, season one was um, people dug it. So thank you. Yeah. And for those of you who watched the show, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay, so who are some? If you had to list like a couple of key people in your life that helped you get like where you're at now, who would oh, okay. be? Yeah, that's that's easy. I've I've been thinking about this question for a long time. Um, uh, it starts with uh, my mother. My mother is, is um, she's. I remember she prayed for me when I was like ten. She was like, "God, keep him so busy that he won't be caught up in the streets." And uh, I think that prayer was effective because I grew up in the hood. We, we you know, I'm from South Central LA, and so I stayed next door to some gang members, five houses down from another set of gang members, walked to school with them throughout the, so it was crazy, but I think her praying really set me up to be very, very busy uh, in the arts and even, and not necessarily even paid, but just busy working. Right. Um, there's Mark E. Swin, my theater uh, yeah. director. Who, Love Mark. Mark just gave me the, um, Mark gave me the whole the foundation of what this this thing called acting is. Yeah. What that means, um, Uta Hagen's book, uh, Respect for Acting, um, mm -hmm. and then Stanislavski's book, An Actor Prepares. Um, yeah. So those books, you know, are key for anybody thinking about this thing called acting. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's Byron Nora. Yes. Uh, Byron Nora just helped to uh, break down furthermore what Mark had already instilled and just the he was like the homework uh, part of this craft and so anytime I have an audition or something I get with him and Byron has a unique way of making me feel like um, I can handle anything and that's part of why I go to him not only just for the homework and the breakdown of the scenes and stuff but uh, just the empowerment that he gives me. So when I go into these auditions, I feel really strong. Um, and there's prayer behind that. And uh, I just feel a lot more prepared mm -hmm. for what it is I want to tackle. So anything I've booked, uh, Byron has had something to do with it. So, That's great. Um, so yeah, and then my, and then my friends, I, you know, I have really good friends who, like some people, you know, some artists grew up and their friends are saying, you know, they put them down for uh, doing the arts. But my friends weren't like that. I mean, because I've always been artistic. So my friend, I have some really good friends who believe in what I'm doing. And so, uh, you know, that, that's that been great. And of course, God over all of this stuff uh, has allowed me to work it out. So Absolutely. Okay. So what's your ultimate goal as a performer? Like your top top dream. My my top dream is to do more of this exactly what I'm doing now, which is film, uh, or whether it means from you know uh, film and stand up. That's you know film and not only just uh, screenplays but television um, and stand up is what I like to do. And I'm and then uh, those are the main things. And then on a more personal level, uh, to be able to go back and speak to young people and fund the arts within schools because the arts saved me. So I don't I don't know what I'll be doing without the arts. I'm probably in the streets or something. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my goal. I just don't want to do stand up and film mm -hmm. and then uh, inspire people, like go talk to people. And uh, because I just think that I think that, like, for me, I feel fear is the only, the difference between the talented people of the world, like the, the Jay-Z's of the world, 
and the guy who can rap at the park. It's just fear. Like I don't I don't live in fear. Like I really move in anticipation mm -hmm. of of really great things. So I don't I don't think about I don't even put my energy into what isn't but rather what will be or what it is I want. And uh, I just stay very, very focused. But I'm a passionate person. I, I, I know that a lot of times people, like people got to go after the thing that they do really, really well with the least amount of effort. Like, like that's just, our gifts aren't for us. You know what I mean? So yeah. we got to really, all right, my life changed once I started doing stand-up. It completely changed my outlook, my approach. I used to think that I wasn't a morning person. And then I started working on Ballers. And when I started filming even for The Hustle, I had no problem getting up at 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't wait to get up and get back to set. But I used to think I wasn't a morning person. That's because the things I used to get up for had nothing to do with the thing that I was supposed to do. Right. So, it, it becomes a different thing. There's like, like at this point now, passion becomes like the undergird of which I function from. And I, I, I live my life that way. Um, I do photography. I shoot that way. So I'm just a really passionate person. So I think it rolls over into a lot of areas of my life. Cool. Okay. So I have some top threes for you. Okay. All right. You're giving me your top three of these topics. All right. Your top three weaknesses. Top three weaknesses. And what's the age of the people watching? Try <laughs> <laughs> to keep it as PG uh, 13 as you can. Top three weaknesses. I will say uh, food. I like good food. I like good food. I really like good food. Seasoned food. Um, <laughs> shoes. Okay. I'm a sneaker person. Um, dang, man. Uh, so sh shoes, food, and uh, let me come back to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about your top three cities? Oh, easy. Los Angeles, New York, and Miami. Okay. Yeah. Good. What about your top three favorite actors? Top three favorite actors would be um, first one off top, Denzel Washington. Absolutely. Um, that's off top. I'm trying to think of a. There's a couple actors where I say, man, you know what? I might, I might mess around and throw. Oh, Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Johnny Depp gets busy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's cold, man. And it's and not to go, you know, going to this, but now we're talking about somebody due for an Oscar. That's the guy who's due for an Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say maybe those two, and then um, man, that's a good one. I might go with. Oh, there's a few. I might go with. Dog <laughs> I might go with uh, there's a few. I'm thinking about maybe You're trying to say Forrest Whitaker, aren't you? Maybe. You know, I'm thinking Forrest because he has a subtle he has a subtlety in his performances. And I'd be like, it just a it just comes from a, a really grounded place. Mm -hmm. where he performs, it's subtle. Like he did, he did he did taken three. And he makes great choices. And taking three, he well, he plays a cop who's trying to take down Liam Neeson's character or whatever. And he did this, he grabbed this rubber band. And anytime he wanted to show like some sort of distress or thinking, he would like pull on his rubber band. And it was very, very subtle. Mm -hmm. But I was, that's a great choice. Brad Pitt is really good for making busyness, like in in all the oceans, like he's always eating and little stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I'd be like, those are just really like great choices, you know. Uh, so I, I'll go. With, I go with those three. Okay. What about actresses? Actresses. Ooh we. Okay. Um, actresses. I you know I like um, 
I like Angela. I like Angela Bassett. I think I think she was slept on. I think if if things politically were were different, mm-hmm. she she was due for an Oscar as well. Mm-hmm. You know, but they they they, they and, and I don't know. Like her when it was that wave. I think <laughs> right. like dang, she it was like it was <laughs> that. I yeah. think she should have got some for. So now it's kind of tight. But um, Angela, I'm gonna go with. Um, Oh man, um, Nicole Kidman. Okay, she holds it down, and then, oh man, you're putting me in a. This is quite a conundrum. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me. Oh, let me come back. <laughs> come back to that one too. Yeah, man, this is a rough one. This is, and I like these kind. Of, I like this kind of pressure. I'm, I'm one of these guys. I like pressure. <laughs> Uh, but I can't. Okay, I can't. Well, I'll give you your next one. Okay, okay. this is going to be difficult. All right, your top three Muppets. Muppets. Mm-hmm. We gotta, we gotta mess with Elmo, low key though. We gotta mess with. Elmo. <laughs> He's classic though. I don't even know why, but he just classic. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna go with. I think I'm gonna go with. Um, I feel like maybe the maybe Cookie Monster, man. He was he was cool. And then I think I'm gonna go with let me see. Oh, you know what? No, I'm gonna go with Elmo. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with Bert. But it's Bert Ernie? I'm yeah. Gonna, they cool though. Bert Ernie was cool. <laughs> yeah, they cool though, because he had like the little the high fade. He was all right. <laughs> high fade. Um, okay, your three favorite TV shows. You said my favorite three TV shows. Yes, and I'll let you do. Uh, let's do. You can do past or present. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Boom. Martin number one. <laughs> um, Martin number one. Three's Company is a, a tight second. That dog. Three's is, Company. Three's Company. Oh my! I laugh every time I watch the show. Um, <laughs> and then. It might, you know what? It it might it might be. Dang, I'm going back and forth because I feel like anytime I watch Fresh Prince, like it just always puts me in a good mood, mm-hmm. just just like the Cosby Show does. Mm. But then at the same time, I like Bear on the Discovery Channel. Like you, have you seen Bear? <laughs> no. The white boy jump off the off the. Okay, <laughs> he's incredible. He's a white guy who just lives out. In, in the wild, and he shows you how to survive the oh. most, the most uh, unhuman conditions possible. But he's incredible. He's so smart. I like smart people. So, so you've seen that, like, Jessica? Oh, okay. Jessica's seen that. Yeah, it's incredible. He's, he's an incredible guy. But let's just keep it. I'm going to say Martin Three's Company, Cosby Show. Okay. All right. All right. Do you want to go back to any of them? Oh, yeah. What's, no, I'll, go to, I'll move on to the next one. Okay. <laughs> um, so far, your top three achievements. You said top three achievements? Mm-hmm. Um, my top three achievements, I would be, uh, it would be um, actually, actually doing the things that I said I would do, which was in high school, I signed my friend's yearbooks um, and I put actor, comedian. And for me, I sometimes I forget that I'm actually doing the thing that I said I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say being an artist, which is um, being an artist would be one of them, I suppose. Um, the next one would be um, uh, the top, my top three achievements. I haven't, I haven't achieved them. Is the is the is the honest answer? Um, okay. I haven't achieved them yet, uh, but uh, I, if I had to if, give one, then it would be just actually uh, doing living the gift that I was given is one, but the other two I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so I need to hit you up in another couple of years. I don't know if I would. I don't know if if, I, if I'll ever have an answer to that. Um, okay. The way I see it, I'm going to always try to, you know, because who knows? I mean, 
right I could say something I may say um I may say you know a car and a house but really that's that would be more important to me than me going on a tour uh, uh me going on tour and being able to speak to young people and create and help them find their passion that would be more exciting for me if to do something like that and I'm, that's what i'm hoping to do with the with the attention of the success of my career is being able to really go back because i could talk to young people right now but they don't no one knows me you know and um, some of them may be underage don't even know ballers so right I get to whatever the platform is yeah I'll be able to talk to them and say yo this is how you get it go like i wish somebody would have told me in grade school like oh you know that favorite cartoon show you like you can actually you can be a writer on that show or you know how you like shoes a lot you can design them but nobody told me and, and when i was growing up i'm in the 80s so it's just it was sports um sports white collar jobs um that was kind of what it was um, yeah I, somebody would have told me i could be an artist you know there's a whole nother lane for for people who like me but i didn't know right until after the fact it was like oh i can do this thing called acting all right well cool you know so that's what I'm that, kind of, that kind of leads into my one of my final questions um is what would you say to upcoming or aspiring performers or artists? Like um, if you could, if you could say to yourself, like you just kind of said, like way back when, like what would you say to any of them who are watching that uh, were trying to get to a higher? Say, um, whatever it is that you you really love to do, um, go after that because you know even with school, like sometimes. We're encouraged to go to college and people are taking up majors that have more to do with financial gain than personal happiness. And when people do that, those ideas become very ephemeral and they'll find themselves with a lot making the money that they they feel they should have, but they're not quite happy. I know mm -hmm. people with law degrees that work at Target because they just don't want to even really do law, but their mom and whoever pushed them into doing that. And for me, I'm like, man, whatever it is you think you want to do that makes you happy on the inside, work towards that now. Like, Because I used to think that I had to be an adult. That's when life started. You know, it, and it doesn't. And for the young people that are under 25, you know, who had careers on 25 when Wayne started, Justin Bieber, Beyonce, and so forth, they had people around them that pushed them in to say, yo, you can, you're, uh, there's something there. Let's, you know, let's develop that and let's nurture that. And so I would say, yo, whatever it is that makes you happy, you should really do that. And uh, don't live in fear. Just move forward. Like, I, I live in expectancy. Like right now, right now I'm in the gym, whether y'all believe it or not. I mean, I'm in the gym. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Listen, I go. The gym is mental, right? Like before I started working out, I weighed about 160 pounds, right? Now that I'm in the gym, five days a week, protein shakes, I read my Liftweight magazines, I weigh about 160 pounds. Nothing has changed, but it's mental. It's mental, right? So, in the gym, not because I even see any change necessarily, but the ideas of I know something is coming up. I don't wait for things to come up. I just move. And before I booked Ballers, um, I was in acting classes and I was just going for it. And I was just I was I knew something was coming. And so, you know, keep the faith. Think big. You know, and sometimes people say, you know, write goals that you can achieve and that you that are real. What is that to me is my question. Like, think, th think way bigger than that. Like, almost to the point where people be like, that ain't going. That ain't what it's gonna be. You know, I'm sure. Had I told my friends in high school, man, 
watch. When I get when I get older, I'm a tour with Chris Tucker. That was that was too far for my high school friends. Had I told them that, mm-hmm. even though I used to, right. you know, impersonate them on campus and all that stuff. And it's just a small like that's how that works. If I would have told even my friends last year, yo man, uh, while I'm teaching an after school program, mm-hmm. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work with Dwayne Johnson, man. I'm up like we were like, yeah. All right. I'm like, no, like I believe. You can't. That's another thing too. You can't tell everybody your dreams because people don't, don't think as big as you are. Think as big as you, are. and they will, they will impose their fears upon you. you know, say, well, I, um, you know, you can't, you can't actually um, win an Oscar. I'm like, no, you can't win an Oscar. I, right. I, I'm going to do what it is because it's two types of people. Ones who say they can, and ones for those who say they can't. And ideally, they're both right. So I just like to move forward without any fear. And so that's what I would suggest. I didn't mean to be so vociferous about it, but yeah, I just, I'm very passionate about this. Okay, well, do you have any shout outs to anyone or? Yes, um, besides the ones I mentioned, Mark Swinton, Byron Nora, um, there's Inns Mitchell, um, a club that uh, the owner of a, of a uh, comedy club that's in LA who lets me get up and work out so that I can even have material uh, when I do stand up. Um, you know, there's Prentice Penny, the guy who had the faith to book me on my first TV show because the industry, they like who they like. So this guy mm-hmm. was like, yo, I want to go against the grain. I'm going to book a group of people that nobody has heard of. And that yeah. was, you know, um, the people at HBO who fought for me in the room, you know, to be a part of the show. And so, and then, you know, my family and, um, you know, I think, I think that's about, I think it's about it. And you know, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but, well, man, I- I, I be trying to figure this out, man. Cause people, people be like, man, you didn't even say my name. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> to the airport that time, remember? I was like, oh, that was in '95. Right. But the people I name, I think, I think that's that's it. You know, those those people. Um, you know, and I mean those names within the family because it's Byron and his wife Malette, and they've opened their home to me. And mm-hmm. um, you know, anybody who's ever fed me, um, let me rest on their couch, um, has looked out for me. I'm I'm very appreciative. Um, of that kind of thing, and so yeah, I'm trying to get um, I'm gonna try to get Mark next and see if he'll if he can carve out some time in his schedule. Yeah, to, Mark, uh, yeah. Chat. Um, so, been really, you know, we stay in touch a lot, and um, you know, he's uh really doing big things. Yeah, like you are, and um, I'm just happy to have you know, worked with you for that small amount of time 10 years ago. I know, that was great, man. That was great. That was great. And it was a great show, and I and I hope he does it again soon. I would, you know, would yeah. love to see the progression of that, of that show. Um, and for all my single women, are you single? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know I was going to ask you, London. Like, come on. No, I have to ask you. I I um uh, I put my my focus into my work. You didn't say yes or no. Uh, I, well, I'm, am I in a, am I in a relationship like boyfriend girlfriend? I'm not in a relationship. Okay. So I just um, but I I, I do I work a lot. I I love working a lot. Yes. And so, but you know, it's funny because the thing sometimes that people think they like about you, they, that's the thing they come to despise. Like, I remember I've, I've dated some girls and you know, they'd be like, oh, you, you're so talented. You've been, you be telling jokes and you be doing your little plays and stuff. And then when they be like, so can we go out Tuesday? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm working Tuesday. I can't. Right. Wow. You, so every night? I'm like, yeah, every, <laughs> every night. I'm gonna play. So... At this point, I just I don't I don't you know try to go out hunting and nothing like that. I just right. You really working low key. I'm low key with everything. Yes, 
Yeah. You are. You 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 are low key with with everything, which is you know. As, as long as I've known you, you've always been that way. There's no need to. If it's real, whatever it is, it 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 it'll come up. It a surface. I don't, there's no need to go around talking about anything. And then also too, once we realize that our gifts are not for us, I'm just I because my friends would be like, they'd be like, man, why are you humble? Like, what's going on? But it's really not. It's not some sort of facade of anything, but like honestly, it's like a guy who has a rental, right? Who goes around flossing a rental? It's not even yours. So I feel that same mm-hmm. way with our gifts. Like our gifts are not for us. So right. I'm just glad I was chosen to be the recipient of this thing called acting or you know with photography, whatever it is I do. I don't, I'm just you know right. to be picked. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking time today. No, 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 no. Uh, my, my pleasure. My pleasure. And you have a safe trip. Thank you. Back to LA. And anytime you feel like talking, you let me know. All right. Stand and um, we'll keep in contact with you and check in on you. Yeah, please do. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be something cool and exciting. You know, even if it's, you know, just a show airing or something in July and uh, something's going to happen. I don't know what it is, but something great and big is going to happen. So. And you're going to let me know when we can get down here. Okay. Talk and do. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yes. Check your schedule. Talk. Have your people call my people. Right. Although my people is literally me, but right. whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my people going to probably just be my sister because... <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm around, man. I'm I'm around. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. And you take care of yourself, and I'll text you in a little bit. All right. Um. Yeah. Let me see. I'm at Real London Brown. If they want to. Yeah. Give us all stuff. that stuff. Your Twitter and your Instagram and your. Um, your Facebook. I'm, at, I'm at Real London Brown. That's on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I'mLondonBrown.com is my site. I just got to update my my shows on there. But, um, yeah, and the show comes out in July. Okay. Um, HBO, that should be fun. And um, I think, or if you guys hashtag um, London Brown, either London Brown Shots or hashtag The Homeless Are People Too, um, you can see my photos that I do of the homeless people because I really believe that the homeless are people as well. And mm-hmm. we're all just a couple situations from possibly being there as well. So Absolutely. let's just try to be very kind to people um, as we pursue our dreams is, I guess, the message behind that. So Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, so- Thank you, and, 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 and the team, and the team, and everybody. <laughs> and the team, Jessica. <laughs> what up, Jesse, though? What up, though? Hey! Just <laughs> chilling. Actually about to go to one of these high schools and get busy with um Southwest show, so yes, on our way to do that now. All right, so yes, um, I guess please have a good rest of the day, and uh, we'll touch down. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.